The Order's Dialogus are one of the numerous non-militant divisions found throughout the Adeptus Sororitas. The Sororitas of the Dialogus are highly educated linguists and scholars who are capable of deciphering almost any form of text, be it of holy, chaotic or Xenos origin. Because their studies often require them to come into contact with heretical tomes, the Sisters of the Dialogi ceaselessly train themselves to strengthen both their mind and soul, so that they may resist the corrupting influence that such texts may have, and stealing their resolve against the temptations offered by such forbidden knowledge. While the Dialogi may devote their lives to research and academic study, they are as equally formidable upon the battlefield as other Sororitas, thanks to their intensive physical conditioning and combat training. The Dialogi will sometimes accompany the forces of the Order's Militant into battle, where they will inspire their sisters by chanting hymns, reciting holy psalms and roaring oaths that are to be repeated by the faithful, whilst they fearlessly smite the unclean with both bolter and blade. As a result of their expertise in both languages and academics, combined with their profound spiritual tenacity, many Dialogi will find themselves recruited by the agents of the Inquisition, so that their talents and skills in such fields can be put to use. Even planetary governors will request for the services of the Dialogi, particularly in the event of ancient texts being discovered upon their world as such artefacts may be the memoirs of Imperial Saints, lost tomes of the Imperial Creed, or otherwise prove pious in nature. One such incident would occur during the middle years of M41, upon the refinery world of Vangor's Folly. After a set of ancient documents were discovered to have been buried within the planet's crust, the Vangorian Promethean Barons would request the services of the Dialogi from the Order of the Lexicon in hopes of ascertaining their contents. As the Dialogi began their studies of these texts, the Vangorians would begin to speculate as to what the subject matter of these documents could be, with some hypothesizing that they could have dated back to the time of the Great Crusade, possibly even containing written accounts of the Emperor from when he walked among mankind. For over a decade, the Dialogi would continue in their research, before their findings were reported to the Ecclesiarchy. Whatever the Dialogi discovered, it did not bode well for the Vangorians, as soon after the Order of the Lexicon delivered their report, Sororitas militants from the Order of the Ebon Chalice would arrive within orbit of the world. The Ebon Chalice would then proceed to systematically destroy each of the world's four spaceports, ensuring that the Vangorians had no hopes of escaping from their impending punishment. Canoness Intolerance would then utter a prayer for the souls of the world's Promethean Barons before releasing a series of autocombustive pathogens into the world's atmosphere, subjecting Vangor's folly to exterminatus. So what could have been discovered upon Vangor's folly that would have necessitated for the world to have been burned? The simplest and most likely answer in this regard is that the texts discovered upon the world were of heretical origin. Such tomes may range from simple religious documents that praise the ruinous powers, to books about demonology, with the latter of which possibly even detailing the various methods with which to summon such creatures into the material realm. The Imperium has been known to go to almost any length in order to keep the knowledge of demonic entities a closely guarded secret, and is not above scouring entire worlds in order to prevent such knowledge from becoming widespread or through the fear that a world's population may have been tainted by their exposure to such creatures. Not even those who battle against demons are exempt in this regard, with two of the most prominent examples being that of the First Armageddon War and the Siege of the Fenris System. In the case of the former, the world's planetary defence forces were intended to be rounded up, sterilised and sentenced to spend the remainder of their lives within forced labour camps while in the case of the latter, many of the world's native tribes were purged by the Inquisition, despite battling against the demonic legions of the Chaos God Zinch. The only reason as to why these two worlds in particular were not subjected to full-scale exterminatus was due to industrial and strategic importance in the case of Armageddon and the fact that Fenris was the homeworld of a first founding chapter of the Adeptus Astartes. Alternatively, instead of demonological tomes, perhaps the documents that were discovered upon Vangor's folly were written by a member of the Traitor Legions, 
or more specifically, one of the traitor Primarchs. Following the events of the Horus Heresy, many of the records pertaining to the traitor Primarchs would become heavily restricted within the Imperium's historical archives, with the knowledge of their existence being known only to a relative handful of people throughout the Imperium. As far as the common citizenry of the Imperium is concerned, only the Nine Loyalist Primarchs ever existed, although certain organisations, such as the Adeptus Astartes, remain aware of their existence. With this in mind, if the Vangorians had discovered a series of texts penned by a Primarch, such as Lorgar of the Wordbearers or Magnus of the Thousand Sons, then such information coming to light could have forced the Adeptus Sororitas to purge Vangor's folly of all life, due to such an artefact being tainted. This isn't entirely unprecedented, as a similar such series of events occurred within the short story, Black Dawn. Sometime during M41, the citizens of the world of Ixo Primaris would uncover a gargantuan bolt pistol dating back to the time of the Great Crusade. Given its sheer size, the people of Ixo Primaris believed that the weapon belonged to none other than the Primarch Rebute Gilliman, as the Ultramarines Legion was said to have liberated the world during the course of the Crusade. Gilliman's pistol would become one of the world's most sacred relics, attracting scores of religious pilgrims and tourists who wished to lay their eyes upon it, transforming the world into a prospering hub of commerce and religious fervour. However, in reality, the world had not been liberated by the Ultramarines as initially believed, as all records regarding the world's history had been extensively altered in order to conceal the truth. The Space Marine Legion that had brought Ixo Primaris into compliance was none other than the Lunar Wolves, and the bolt pistol that had been uncovered had, in actuality, belonged to the arch-traitor Horus Lupercal, the very man that led the rebellion against the Emperor during the Horus Heresy. When knowledge of the pistol's discovery reached the Inquisition, Inquisitor Corm of the Order Melius, alongside a strike force of Astartes from the Emperor's Warbringers chapter, would launch an assault upon the world. The planetary governor, alongside scores of civilians and planetary defence soldiers, would be slain, and despite Corm's wishes to study an object of such significance, the Warbringers viewed the pistol as being little more than a chaos-tainted abomination, and proceeded to destroy it. While the world of Ixo Primaris was not subjected to Exterminatus, as was the case with Vangor's Folly, this could be partially due to not only the differing methodology of the Inquisition and the Adeptus Sororitas, but also the nature of the artifacts in question, as heretical texts can spread their poison to a greater degree than a simple, misidentified weapon. With these factors in mind, if the texts found upon Van Gogh's Folly were copies of something akin to the Grimoire Nostramo of Conrad Kurz, or the Clotted Scrolls of Angron, then the actions performed by the Adeptus Sororitas would most certainly appear to be justified. But there is another possibility regarding just what kind of texts these were, that instead of being tomes that had been penned by one of the traitor Primarchs, or other such servants of the Chaos Gods, these documents were a kind that could still be considered heretical in nature, not as a result of them being associated with the Ruinous Powers, but due to them denouncing the superstitions and myths propagated by religion in general. So could it be possible that these texts discovered upon Van Gogh's Folly had contained within them some of the last surviving records of the Imperial Truth? During the course of the Great Crusade, the Emperor of Mankind sought to eradicate all forms of religious worship from his Imperium, stating to the masses that humanity was above such primitive, nonsensical beliefs, and that their species must elevate itself by embracing logic, science, and reason. The only sect of humanity that the Emperor allowed to retain their religious practices was that of the Martian Mechanicum, as part of the terms laid out within the pact between the Imperium and the Mechanicum Empire known as the Treaty of Olympus. However, the real reason behind the widespread propagation of the Emperor's Imperial Truth was that the Master of Mankind had realised that religious practices, faith and superstition granted the Chaos Gods a way to worm their way into the hearts of men and sought to remove this weakness from the collective psyche of humanity, as part of his prolonged metaphysical campaign against the Ruinous Powers. 
Following the events of the Horus Heresy, the influence of the Imperial Truth would begin to rapidly dwindle, and a new religion that focused upon the veneration of the Emperor as a god would grow to in time become the State Church of the Imperium. Today, the Imperial Truth has been all but forgotten, with variations on the concept continuing to be practiced only by a select few within the Imperium, such as certain chapters of the Adeptus Astartes. If the texts found upon Van Gogh's folly truly dated back to the time of the Great Crusade, as some of the world's Promethean barons had speculated, then it's possible that the documents they discovered were left behind by those members of the Administratum that were assigned to help spread the concept of the Imperial Truth to the world's citizens shortly after the world had been brought into compliance. If this were the case, and such documents were examined by the highly religious dialogi of the Adeptus Sororitas, then it's logical to assume that the Ecclesiarchy would view such texts as being heretical, since by their very existence they question the divinity of the God Emperor. Since it's possible that the Ecclesiarchy may not have been aware that such texts were based upon the Emperor's own teachings, then it's no surprise as to why the Order of the Ebon Chalice subjected the world to exterminatus so that they may prevent others from learning about such possibilities, who in turn may potentially challenge the authority of the Imperial cult. But then again, if the Ecclesiarchy were in fact aware of the existence of the Imperial Truth, then by that logic, the reason as to why such texts would need to have been destroyed alongside those that learned of their existence would be to, once again, maintain the Church's political power and influence throughout the Imperium. Ultimately, unless these texts were spirited away by the Dialogus and subsequently locked away within the Vault of Origins, deep beneath the Ecclesiarchal Palace upon Terra, then they would have burned along with the rest of Van Gogh's folly, meaning that we will never learn the truth about their contents. What do you think? Leave a comment below, and thanks for watching.